Let's hear it for Ricky. Isn't he cute? I have underwear older than him. It's great. I have milk in my refrigerator older. Hi, it's fun. Here we are in New York City in the summer. It's so it's it's great in the summer. Are you all visiting? Yeah. The humidity is about you know the humidity is about a thousand index, and so is the urine about a thousand. In, it's nice to be here in the summer. And I, uh, there's a Starbucks. Did you go to the Starbucks? There's one, of course, every five minutes. I was just in the Starbucks. And I got to tell you, I, I drink that coffee but hate it. Anybody else? It's $82 a cup, number one. But I think they put crack in it, I swear to God. There's crack in that coffee. You ever see people online at Starbucks like this? Give me a latte. Well, why else are we paying that money? But I'm standing online, there's a white couple in front of me that adopted a Chinese baby. And the woman says, I don't think I'm gonna tell her she's adopted. <laughs> well, you better tell her how she turned Chinese, because at uh, <laughs> some point she's gonna ask. <laughs> then she goes and orders decaf espresso. Decaf espresso. Is that not an oxymoron? Seriously. That's like walking into a drugstore. I'd like some of those non-drowsy sleeping pills, please. I hate when they make me tired. I'd like that with the KY powder, you have it? How about those fishnet condoms? They're effective, you got those? How about those time-released antidepressants? You got those? They actually came out with time-released antidepressants. Time-released antidepressants, what is this? What kind of roller coaster ride is that? So you're walking around, I'm gonna kill myself. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm so unhappy. Not anymore. I saw an ad about depression. There was an ad on the somebody said, don't let depression get you down. That's like saying, don't let an orgasm bring you joy, pretty much. Yeah, take the subways, there's great ads. Years ago, I swear to God, there was an ad in the subway that, I swear, said, Mary is being treated for cocaine abuse and no one in her office knows. And there was a picture of Mary. <laughs> I'm like, I hope the people in her office are carpooling. That's all I got. Now there's an anonymous program. You know what you can't do in this city anymore? You can't smoke anywhere. I'm outside smoking a cigarette. Somebody goes, don't smoke, there's a baby in Brooklyn. <laughs> now don't smoke, kids, it's very bad for you. Don't smoke, I'm not advocating. Cause look at me, I'm 25. <laughs> um, smoking's made me look like this. It's not that funny, my friend. Okay. <laughs> but it's bad, it's ridiculous. People come up to you, you're smoking, you wanna be alone. You know, cigarettes take years off your life. Yeah, but they're at the end. <laughs> Who cares? It's ridiculous. And in this city, cigarettes are 12 bucks a pack. Have you tried to buy? 12 bucks a pack? Yeah, heroin's cheaper. I switched. <laughs> now I'm shooting up. Nobody bothers me. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Nobody walks up to me. It's crazy. It's hard, but you know what? I'm a little older. Don't say anything. I grew up, everybody smoked, everybody. My mother and father used to smoke constantly with me and my brother in the car. The windows rolled up. Not down, up. I don't know how we saw where we were going. <laughs> Open the door, puff of smoke, me and my brother. Hey! <laughs> doctors would smoke when I'm a kid. I remember going to the doctor with my mother. We're sitting there, the doctor's like, I think you have asthma. <laughs> My mother smoked so much, she was smoking while giving birth to me, I swear to God. I came out of the womb, I had ashes on my head. And the doctor was over, I thought, I think it's a girl, let me see.